Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video I'm going to be giving you a lesson and this is going to be the fourth and final part of the series that we've been doing on decision theory. So we're going to be ending it off by looking at various decision criteria that we can make. But just to sum up what's been going on, we're playing a game where we see a coin is being flipped. So a coin is flipped and it can either land on heads or it can land on tails. But not necessarily because what we're told is that there's a chance that the coin might be fair, in which case heads and tails have both got equal probability of coming up. Or the coin could be unfair. It could be dub double headed. It could have just have heads, which means no matter what, you're never going to get tails. It's only going to become heads. What's nice about this game, though, is we're allowed to observe one toss of the coin. So they're going to flip the coin for us. And depending on what that outcome is, we're going to make our decision or we're going to guess whether it is fair or unfair. If we guess correctly, then there is a zero penalty. But if we guess incorrectly, there is a one pound penalty. So what we saw is in the previous videos, we looked at um, the risk function and that was the expected loss depending on the decision we chose and the state of nature that we saw. And go watch those videos to get a little bit of a recap. But what we get left with is the following, um, the following matrix. So these are our two states of nature and we have our two decisions. Okay, decision one and decision three. Because decision two and decision four, as we saw in the previous video, got dominated. And we're now left with the following payoff. Okay, but let me maybe explain more about this matrix here. So just make it more real. So let's write out what we're meaning by these things here. State one is that the coin is unfair in the sense that it's two heads. And state two is that it is fair, which means that there is heads and there's tails. Okay. What was decision one? Decision one was that if it's heads, if the outcome of the coin is heads, then we're going to say that the coin is unfair. Maybe let me write unfair. Okay. So if we observed heads, we're going to say it's unfair. And if we see a tails, if we observe a tails, we're going to say that it's fair. Decision three was no matter what, we're just going to say that it's fair. And this is therefore going to mean that we either pay the penalty or we don't pay the penalty. Where with decision one, um, we either don't pay the penalty and then there's almost like a, you know, half, like a 50-50 whether the coin actually, because if it comes up heads, you know, there's a 50-50 chance that it was fair and that it was unfair. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be now focusing in on this game matrix and we're then going to be looking at various decision criteria. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at, say, from a random, if we remember in the very first video, we spoke about this random strategy. Let's look at what the random strategy would be in this situation. So what should our random strategy be? So what we're going to do is we're going to assign um, probability. So we're going to assign probability P to decision 1 and 1 minus P to decision 3. Okay, and this is going to give us the following. Okay, we're going to have the expected loss, okay, given that the coin is unfair okay so the expected loss given that the coin is unfair for decision one this is means it's going to be zero times p plus one times one minus p so remember we're looking at state one and what we're doing here is this zero and this one don't that's not the one over there this is the payoff you know, we either get it right or we get it wrong type of thing. Um, whereas we can look at the expected loss given 
decision two. And this is going to be equal to over here. So it, it is it is these ones. Apologies for that. So that one is corresponding to here because we're looking at the expected loss for our decisions given our states. Apologies for that. So what we're going to have is a half times P plus zero times one minus P. Zero times one minus P. Okay. So work that out and we're getting something like one minus P and for expected loss, we're going to get a half P. And that's just working that out and working that out. Just going to remove the working out so that we do have some more space. Okay, so this is the expected loss given it was in state one and the expected loss if it is in state two. And we've just taken the payoffs and multiplied them by the probability that we would choose the various strategies. So what we're working for now is we want to see, you know, how much of the time should we go with decision one and how much of the time should we go with decision three? Now, what we can do is these two values over here are equal when P is equal to two thirds. Okay, we just, you know, add the P on that side and then divide across and we get two thirds. Okay, so with P with two thirds, it means, what does this mean? It means that if we had to do our random strategy, then for one decision, decision one, we should do that two thirds of the time and decision three, we should do one third of the time. So which means two thirds of the time, we should say that if we see a heads, it's unfair. And if we see a tails, it's fair. And one third of the times, we must just say it's always fair, regardless of whether it becomes heads or tails. That's what we need to do. And that's what happens if we adopt a random strategy. But remember from the first video, there were other strategies that we could also employ. And we could use the min-max uh, criteria. So the min-max criteria. So random strategy is two-thirds decision one and one-third decision uh, three. If we remove this, and we look now from it from a min-max perspective, what are we going to see? Well, remember, with the min-max is we want to choose the, the most risk-adverse decision. So the decision that gives us the smallest penalty. So if our, the person playing this game doesn't want to lose a lot of money, we can see that with decision one, the most they can lose is a half. The most they can lose with decision three is a one. We want to minimize this worst-case scenario, which is the half, which therefore means decision one is the best um, strategy to play if we want to use the min-max criteria. And I'm going to introduce the final criteria, okay? And maybe we need to make, we need to make some space for this one. This is going to be known as the Bayes criteria. And the Bayes criteria is interesting because this is what's going to happen when the state of nature is a random variable. So what we looked at in the previous, um, for the random strategy, the decisions, you know, what decision should we play, that was random. You know, we wanted to try, say, okay, two-thirds of the time we'll go decision one, one-third of the time we'll go decision three. Now we want to ask ourselves, well, what if the probability of the coin being fair or unfair is a random variable? So this is where things get, get actually quite interesting. So let's look at this third and final one, because after we've done this, we've finished the lesson, we've finished this thing on decision, on decision theory, and you can attempt questions around it. So here, this is it, the final one, the Bayes criteria. It's, it's a little bit difficult, so we are going to go slowly. Um, and you know, just bear with me if I make a mistake, hopefully I don't. But what we're going to be saying is we're going to be assigning probabilities. Hold on, let me move this. Let's move this over here and maybe make it a bit bigger. So remember, with the random strategy, we applied the probabilities at the top. With Bayes' criteria, the big thing now is we're applying 
the probabilities to the states of nature. Okay, so what happens here? Let me just fix that little box there. So the states of nature. This means that there's a probability that the coin is unfair and there's another probability that it is fair. And depending on that probability, we need to make our various choices. Because let's say, let's say P is 100%. So we know that the coin is going to be unfair. Then the best strategy is, we can see, going to be decision one. Because if we know that it's unfair, the best thing to do is play decision one. And that is, we'll say it's unfair if it's heads. And it will come up heads because it's unfair. If we know that the probability of it being unfair is zero, then this has got 100%. And the best thing to do now is to go decision three, which is to always say it's fair whether we see a heads or a tails because we know the coin is fair. But what if it's 75% that it could be unfair and 25% that it could be fair? What do we do then? And this is where the Bayes criteria helps us a lot. So what we've got here is the probability of it being an unfair state is equal to P and the probability that it, the coin is fair is equal to 1 minus P. Okay, which means decision one, decision one, its payoff is, is going to be as follows. So for decision one, we're going to see the following. Okay, now we're going to be going down this way. So we're going to take zero times P plus a half times one minus P and that's going to give us a half one minus P. For decision three, what we're going to be doing now is looking down decision three and we're going to take one times the probability, zero times the probability. So we're going to see one now times probability P times zero one minus P we're going to see this value is equal to P. Now, a half 1 minus P equals to P. We're going to see that they're equal when P is equal to a third. Okay. Let's look at what this means. So what we're saying here is if the coin has a 1 in three chances of being unfair, it doesn't matter what decision we make, okay? The Bayes risk is equal, okay? So we're introducing something known as the Bayes risk is going to be equal. But now, what if the probability is greater than a third, okay? Is there now a dominating, well, I don't want to say dominating strategy, but is there a better strategy or a strategy that then minimizes the Bayes risk? And the answer is yes. If the probability that the coin is, uh, th that it's more likely to be unfair than one third, then decision one is gonna be better than decision three. Because remember, decision three has the, has the decision that it will say unfair if it's heads. Whereas decision three says it's fair all the time which means if the probability that the coin is unfair is greater than this number, a third, then decision one is going to be the better strategy to play. And if the probability is less than a third, so this means that the chances that the coin is unfair is quite small, then we can see that decision three is actually going to be better than decision one because it's always going to say fair no matter what the outcome is. And there we're done. We're actually, I know it's taken four videos to get to this point. And I know the very first time you look at this, it is confusing, it is difficult. Hence why I wanted to go through it slowly, go through four videos. And if it hasn't clicked for you yet, the best thing I can recommend is maybe watch all four videos again, and then go and find a question and attempt the question and work through that solution and you will see that it's actually not that difficult once you get your head around this whole concept of Bayes criteria, min-max criteria, random strategy, you know, dominating strategies, risk functions, loss functions. You know, there's, there's a lot of terminology, but once you get past that and if you work 
you know, with your matrix and you draw it out and you see where everything goes, you're going to see that these questions are not that difficult. So this is a classic case where practice makes perfect. Good luck.